Hey you guys, so it's Keto Diamond here with a new collaboration video. Interestingly enough, it's a collaboration video with myself and another keto YouTuber, Team Dave and Mon, or her name is Monica. Her description, her link will be in the description below. But the interesting part about this video, while we are both keto YouTubers, it is not a keto video. Um, we both have a passion for keto, but we also both have a passion for the paranormal. It's an interesting subject to me. I've been enjoying it since I was a child. Ghost stories, fairy tales, that kind of thing. I've always found them fascinating. The ones I find the most fascinating are the ones with the most documentation. So don't forget, after you watch my video and hit that thumbs up button, scoot on over to Monica's video and give it a thumbs up and a watch. And let us know what you both think about the paranormal and this particular home. So... The reason this story fascinates me so much, and it fascinates me more than most ghost stories, because there's a lot of documentation on it. Not just documentation, but documentation from people that normally, they don't play to ghosts. They don't do paranormal. They don't ascertain to that line of thing. Um, so when these people all come together and document the happenings of one home, it's get, it really gets my attention. It really gets my flair going. Now, I heard about this house um, before, before he bought it, or before I found out he bought it. Then I heard he bought it. Then I heard he was doing a documentary on it. Then I anxiously awaited the documentary on it, which took rears, folks. Why? Because things kept happening, and things kept slowing things down. It, it just kept getting wonky. And again, another aspect of a wonderful horror story. Now, the house is called the Demon House. I will say I do not know, know that I necessarily believe in demons or demon possession. Um, perhaps they do exist. I mean, after all, if you have God and good, you must have evil. Um, there must be something to fight and combat against. What it is for real, I have no idea. Do they really exist? I'm not sure. But as far as a paranormal tale goes, it is absolutely fascinating. Now, as Monica mentioned in her video, um, there is a disclaimer as the video comes on that the video is cursed. You could have issues um, prior to watching the video. So, did I say prior? Post? After watching the video, you could have issues. Now, Monica believe she did. Now, I personally have watched the video three times. I've had nothing happen thus far, although I have an open mind, and we'll just see if anything happens this go-round. Maybe something did, and I just didn't put two and two together. Didn't I? But, let's talk about the house itself. Or, we'll talk about the guy first. So, Zach Baggins is the guy who runs Ghost Adventurers. One of my favorite TV shows. I don't watch TV, like, ever. There's three shows that I I will watch if they come on. Supernatural, but you know, hot guys, guns, fast cars, and monster hunting. What's not to love? And great music. Um, <laughs> so I love that show. And then Ghost Hunters, which is a more um, scientific version of Ghost Adventures. Ghost Adventures, while it is a, a fantastic show and they do their best to be scientific, leans a little more to the drama side, as in everything in every place is a gateway or portal to hell. Interesting though, right? So, it's not surprising that one of the world's leading ex experts on the paranormal who heard about the demon house on the evening news would run off and buy said house. So, Zach Baggins heard about it, bought the house, and one week later showed up with a camera crew. Well, it's smart. And it's good business, too. The fella owns a haunted history museum, so we might actually do a collaboration video on that, too, one day. I cannot wait. And we'll tell you about some of the great stuff he has in there, or fascinating stuff, anyway. So, being one of the world's leading researchers, obviously, he's going to rush to the occasion, or rise to the occasion. And uh, the house was on television. The news called it the portal to hell. So, this time, he can't be quite credited or blamed for calling it the portal to hell. However, the news called it that. And they did their own little investigation to take the house out. And by the time Zach Baggins arrived, a week after buying the home, the people who lived in it had hauled butt and moved like 150 miles away. Now, I don't blame them. If that crap was going on in my house, I'm pretty sure I'd get the hell up and leave too. 
I'm just saying. Now, what happened in this house to make these people jump and run like this? The house is nothing special. It's a very boring, basic, kind of little shack. Let me show it to you. Seemingly nothing special or significant and from the outside looking, you know, at it doesn't look haunted, doesn't look like a terrifying tale of horrors, but all right. So in 2011, a family moved in, um, a mom, her three children, and I believe her mother. So pretty much instantly they could hear footsteps coming up and down the basement steps and uh, they even called the police. So the police were notified, the police on multiple occasions, multiple occasions, reported hearing all sorts of stuff, seeing, experiencing. So we have police documentation all throughout the history of the home from 2011 and upwards. The police went to do a well child checkup on the children because the children went to the doctor telling the doctor they were um, talking to dead people. And the doctor said they were delusional. So police did a well child checkup, checked on them and everything. And police and CPS workers or child protective service workers reported claims of the paranormal themselves. At one, and one is during one occasion, occasion, so sorry you guys, my brain's not functioning, but during one occasion, um, 911 was called, the children were taken to the hospital. A therapist and CPS worker or child protective services worker were in the ER room with the children and apparently emergency room staff also witnessed and documented this. One of the children appeared to walk backwards up the wall. The CPS worker or one of those workers quit, moved, and sought therapy. A lot of documentation going on here, folks. Now, eventually, priests were called in and an exorcism was granted, which, if you've watched many horror tales or paranormal tales, they don't just jump in and exercise any claim of the paranormal. They actually do research documentation. They they ask for a permission and approval from higher ups within the church. So they don't just say, okay, well, they said it's haunted. Let's go over there and do a, an exorcism real quick. Now, while there was an exorcism taking place inside this home, three police officers just decided to get up, go down to the basement, and dig up the floor. One of the police officers beforehand had noticed the basement and thought it was quite interesting that the entire basement floor was cemented over except for one area under the stairs. Now he thought that area under the stairs was quite odd. Why would you cement the entire floor and leave that area? Makes no sense, right? So anyway, him and two other officers dug up the floor. They went down as far as four feet they kind of had the suspicion there might be a body in there. They found multiple things. Something flew by my ear. They found multiple things. And I'm going to leave that to you to find out what they found and what all happened entirely. Now, after Zach Baggins brought the, bought the home, he tried to hunt down the people that lived there. They would not speak to him. Their brother, well, somebody's brother, came out and spoke to them, who was incidentally kicked out of the home and not permitted back in because something might have transferred from Zach Baggins, the new owner to the home, of the home, to the brother, and they didn't want him in the damn house. Now, now you just stay the hell outside, honey. You good out there. We don't want that no more. Now, uh, Baggins was also threatened by a t um, horror movie producer uh, because they wanted the rights to the film. Whether they're going to get those and they're going to make them, I don't know. This house could be the next Amityville, except there's a twist. <laughs> So, all of this documentation by the church, by police officers, multiple police officers, some of whom, after witnessing things inside the home, also quit their jobs and moved away. Um, there was a lot. The, I mean, I, I just can't even tell you. Was this mass hysteria? I mean, it could have been, right? I mean, one person says something Everybody's superstitious behavior kicks in, and before you know it, everybody's seeing everything everywhere. Some people even documented that things followed them home, including the police chief. His wife said something definitely came home with him, and she was not happy about it. 
multiple things happened to the crew after arriving and going through the house. I'm not going to tell you all this because I think you will love the actual, um, actually watching it. So I just want to tell you, this is a really highly documented case. There's a lot of claims here. I found a great deal of interest in this house. And what I found the most interesting is what happened to Zach Baggins himself after staying the night in the house completely boarded up and alone. You could even see what appeared to be something on video. You could hear something on video and on audio. And then something medically wrong happened to Mr. Baggins, as well as some of the other people who walked inside the home. A lot of things went just absolutely haywire. So at this point, I'm going to recommend you go watch the video by Team Mon and Dave, who will tell you more in more detail. I believe she reads an article that's quite interesting on the subject. So check out her video, and then go check out the Demon House documentary. You can watch it right here on YouTube. I did. I've watched it three times on YouTube now. There's even a part two, and it's quite interesting. It's basically all the deleted scenes, I believe. Let me see what I wrote it down as. Lost, um, all the lost footage of the Demon House. So it's crazy interesting. People were hospitalized, uh, kicked out of their home, run off. People ran away from town. Um, mental breakdowns, problems with health, eyesight issues. This house put through, it put people through some crazy stuff. All right, it really did. So go check out the documentary. Once you've watched it, please let me know what you thought of the documentary of this video and of Monica's video. Much love to you guys and dolls. That is my collaboration with Team Dave and Mond. Much love, guys. Bye, y'all. Do you know of any other ghostly tales just like this one with documentation and a great deal of interest and proof? Send me a link. Dying to hear.